Welcome to the last episode of 2020 for the Corporate Underground. I'm here with Adam, Tony and Matt. Finn sends his regards. It has been a tremendous year and we are celebrating our win. We have incredible learnings. We have great opportunities to speak across borders without actually ever meeting in person. I felt like we started this because, you know, at least I thought there wouldn't be much else to do. You know, everything was closing up. You're not allowed to do any work. Businesses were all going nowhere. So, like, let's let's do this because we're going to have a lot of plenty of time to talk about these sorts of things and hopefully add some value to others. I think it's hilarious that it... Um, you know, I felt like a lot of people, except for very you know select businesses, but so many were able to like figure something out. I found it very interesting how so many businesses we like didn't see that coming. They 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 did something, and, and I'm refusing to say the p word you know, talking about COVID. That's for sure. I'm sick of people saying it, but they did. They figured this something out, and so many did. And then I think I built some of the best relationships I have, even when I couldn't so see anyone new company included but it was a very interesting year i think it's a you know a good chance to see what craziness can equal when you have the opportunity to think differently yeah look i, I agree tony i mean like it's been a, a funny year for a lot of people i mean like apart from feeling either like a doctor or uh, um, a bandit um imagine walking into a bank with a, um, a mask before COVID, I think it would have been a very, very different. <laughs> look, um, look, for me, it's been an amazing um, opportunity to really get to know people. I mean, usually when you've got, uh, um, when times are tough, you find out what true character is from a lot of people. When money's tight, you find out what what their true colours are. And this has been a big opportunity for all of us to really understand where people are coming from. And you might not be able to walk in somebody's shoes, but that brand of shoe, we've all got this. This is the first time in our adult history, probably in any adult history, that globally we've gone through the same thing together. I think we spoke about this a few months ago in regards to, but my son who's five years old, will be looking at this and he can go at 30 and say, what happened to you in 2020? And it'll be the same right across the board for everybody. Um, and they will have seen their families struggle and some families be successful. They would have seen divorces. They would have seen um, lockdown. They would have spent more time with their parents on some stages um, and got to connect with. I've been blessed enough and lucky enough to have grown an amazing amount over this period with a lot of help from um, the guys on this but uh, and a lot of people outside. My kids have spent a lot more time with me. I've become a lot more focused on them. Um, we've brought uh, Cash, uh, um, our puppy, into, into the world. Uh, um, so he's a new part of our family. So we've grown in so many ways and so many things. Um, and I've seen so many people also grow from that. They've been able to, I hate this word at the moment, but pivot, change what they were doing and grow from that. Um, but there's also a lot of people that I've spoken to um, that have been doing it really tough. Um, and, you know, it's been really interesting for a lot of feedback from people who have been watching this. It's been helpful, um, but also people that just reached out normally. Um, and I think there's a lot more empathy. I hear that word a lot more about what people are going through. AJ, what have you been finding? Um, I don't know, but, you know, like everybody, it's been um, an unexpected year. It's been full of uh, odd experiences. Um, I, I think, you know, I don't think it's necessarily been the same for everybody. In fact, I think, um, you know, uh, we sit here in Melbourne now in Australia in um, one of the best performing COVID countries in the world and, and you know, we, we don't know what it's like to be in the US where there are literally 17 million people who have it and, you know, 300,000 people have died from it. Um, it hasn't, we're not like the UK where the mortality rate is the worst in the world. We're not, you know, we, we've had it differently. That doesn't mean that we haven't had to endure hard stuff and we had the, one of the worst lockdowns in the world where I live in Melbourne, um, but it was worth it because the numbers aren't so bad. But equally, I agree, you know, it was an amazing year to spend time with your kids and your family and, um, be blessed to be, you know, together, which is is pretty special. Um, and for us, it's you know personally for our family, it's been it's been a, a really interesting year. So you know, kids didn't get to go to school, and my youngest daughter didn't really have a proper first year of prep. And 
uh, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and my eldest had a very weird first year of high school. Um, but at the same time, you know, we, we've got a new baby on the way and we're building a house and all those things we could never have thought about at the beginning of the year. And so so life keeps turning, you know. Um, and, and so I think it's been a great year for resilience and for us to remember what's important to us um, to get some perspective about the world that we lived in and, and whether or not it's the way that we want to keep living in the world going forward. For me, you know, part of that is I've become a vegetarian this year because I've really thought about the footprint that I have in the world. And, and so it's it's 2020 has been momentous for a lot of reasons. What were the top learnings that you will take away and integrate into 2020? So which are the learnings that you're now going to, you know, formulate into a program for yourself? For, for me, it's going to be um, more of the same. I mean, like this is the first year I, I actually started uh, um, uh, consulting and management going forward, um, using everything that I've learned before. And it's been a fantastic year for me because there's so many people that are looking internally into themselves and trying to work forward where they want to be. So it's been really, really great for me. Um, but doing something that I've always been good at and always really love to do and have done for free all my life now to be able to sort of say, I want to be able to do this. So my learning is going to be continually to take on new people, but also to be surrounding myself with some fantastic people. I've got a goal. I have a belief that 90% of the world is transactional um, and 40% of the people I deal with are abundance people. Now, I get why transactions happen. I have to pay for the petrol. I have to pay for, uh, I can't do a dance. I'm not going to fill up my car. I'm not going to go there and get food from the supermarket. But I want within the next five years to have uh, 80% of the people that I'm doing business with and surrounding myself to have an abundance mindset, which to me, that word means that we're all trying to help each other to get further ahead, that you can really support one another to actually look after those. And I've already started that with um, this group uh, in particular, but there's been outside of that with Tony and there's been so many, Mary, um, uh, uh, Finbar, obviously, and uh, uh, Frank. These are all guys who have got the same sort of mindset that we're working together to help uh, young entrepreneurs, uh, the youth entrepreneurs thing that Frank started that we're working towards on. There's um, a whole bunch of different groups that I've joined and everybody seems to be working from an empathy point where they want to help people because they can really see the haves and the haves nots or the haves and they want, we can help these other people that maybe not that are there that are just struggling at the moment. And everybody that I know has run a business has struggled at some point in time. And it's when they've opened up and asked for help that that help has been there. Now, that's what we're trying to achieve and that's what we're trying to do. So um, for me, that's what the next year is going to be all about. Tia, what about you? What are you going to be doing this year? Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting to recap. If I were to put it in three words, I've been sort of meditating on these. It would be awe. Like I've been awe-inspired in so many ways, you know, walking through the park and seeing the most simplest and most beautiful of things. Um, focus a lot of my time has been in one location which is incredibly rare for me i've spent something like 15 years of my life being pretty globally um nomadic and so having a location has allowed me to focus on other things and i'd also say that this past year has a, has been a lot about surrender not knowing what's going to happen like you know of course when you're traveling quite a lot you're working abroad there are really big chances that the next 24 months or 12 months are very much going to be in view. You know what you're going to be doing, you know which um, you know uh, organizations you're going to be working with, you know who's still going to be in business, you know where you're going to be going. And I feel that that really hasn't necessarily been in sight. So it's very much felt like surrendering and letting go of the expectations and, you know, also letting go of the opinions, right? Like the judgments and should be, should not be, I've got to get this done, really. Um, is it just as important as, you know, last year? Not really. I think that surrender has really taught me how to let go of things that may not be as important, but but because of this sort of global awakening of what's more important to us when, there's the potential of, you know, um, 
I want to say death in front of us? How does it shift our opinions, our relationships with each other? What does it give to us? How do we sort of skill up for the next 12 months of, again, not knowing anything? Tony, what about you? What's your feedback from this year? I think, yeah, like like Tia brings up a good point there. Like I think the biggest thing I've done this year is lean into what I always have valued and believed in. You know, just it was just more of a, you know, you don't have the option to go do something that someone else thinks you should do, so you go with what you should do. Um, and it really worked. So I think having that um, resilience and confidence to go, no, well, I actually do want to do things differently. I like doing things differently and the people around me like it. So why do I keep, you know, second guessing it? And and also having, you know, more good fuel in the tank. You know, I guess a bit of what Tia was saying, like you never know what's around the corner. You never know what sort of horribleness is out there. And after everything I've been through, I've always like had that opinion of, um, you know, like, you know, take that time to do what is, I guess, more important. But the problem is we all get busy, we all get distracted. And I guess in a year where you couldn't, like, really, you know, you do too much extra things, you know, you're sort of stuck at home. So you could work a lot at home, but at the same time you didn't have to. So you that was easy to sort of go, oh, I might actually just do this around the house or I might do that. Or, um, you know, you got to see your partner every 20 minutes, you know, like or every hour, you know, when you went to get a snack or a drink, you know, like like how often would you get that sort of thing? So I think that's where it sort of reminded me that, you know, I moved up to the country because I like it up here. Why do I spend so much time away from it? Um, my family is my highest priority. Why do I, you know, you know, even nine to five, I always thought I was great for having the rule of nine to five, but that seems like a lot. Maybe I don't need to do that. So you know, these are the things I feel like, um, you know, people in general have either loved or hated, to be fair. Some people did spend too much time with people they don't like. Um, but, like, I spent a crap load of time with people I love and I'm going to do that more. And that's given me – and you'll be – and, like, I always tell others, like, you can compress the quality. Like, you go, oh, I'm so busy. I'm like, I have been busier than I've ever been. Um yet probably work technically less hours, you know what I mean? But I've just got a hell of a lot done in smaller amounts of time. Um, so maybe the nine to five is not really what we need to do. Maybe it's the amount of work you can get done in a small amount of time. Hey, Jay. Come for a walk with me. We're just going to go for a walk and... Because it's, you know, it's I like this. Show, so, so I'm not, there's no point. I know, right? I do. I'm just going for a walk. Um, look, <laughs> in terms of learning, I don't know what the learnings are this year. I think ultimately, um, I think it's just to be, to accept the fact that things aren't going to go the way you want them to go. Um, and they're, they're going to be different and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, and you don't need to hold on to, like, I'm a bit OCD at the best of times. And so, you know, I like things to be a particular way all the time. And, and this year has been a good lesson in just kind of rolling with it. And that even though I still get to do the projects I like and, and all that stuff, but they don't have to be exactly the way I would necessarily do them. And they're not necessarily with the exact group of people I would always necessarily do them with. Or, mm. And so that's been a good lesson for me this year. Um, and I think the other thing is, um, is just to have empathy, you know. It's been a big year to watch other people go through really hard stuff. And, you know, there was a period in Melbourne where we were locked down and, well, is me, the rest of the world were looking at us going, those poor bastards with the hardest lockdown on the planet. And now, you know, and now we've been out for, we haven't had a case in 50-something days and we're watching what's happening all over the rest of the world and you just go, you know, I feel for you. We've, we've been through that and we know what it's like and, um, and, and I think it's important to have that empathy in, in everything that we do. Uh, and then the other thing is that, you know, for me at work, the most remarkable thing has been in light of all of the challenges of, of this year, um, all the really like big 10,000 foot juicy, meaty, amazing projects just kept going. And so like even in the face of crisis, 
there was all this unbelievable stuff happening. Um, and, and that's, you know, that's both exciting and kind of um, reassuring that, that even though the world feels a bit upside down, people are still prepared to chase stuff that matters. And I think that's really important too. Great. Um, guys, what was your favourite topic uh, or the recording that we've done this year? We've covered a, a, a bit of ground um, and I think it's been, uh, there's been a lot of learning about each other. So um, I've found out a lot about uh, Tia and AJ and Tony and Finn um, going through, but what was the topic that you sort of dealt with this year that you thought, wow, that was really good. I really got something out of that. Personally. I really liked unlearning. Mm -hmm. I loved, I loved the, I loved the discussion on what is it if you had the choice that you don't want to take with you. I think we're always sort of shoving things into the bag and sort of moving along with lots of you know, new things and new learnings and you know new ways of doing things. But what's, you know, what's heavy? What's, um, what's bogging you down? What's, you know, what's creating friction and i think just the framework on that was was so much fun just to sort of have that as a you know as a skill set right you know what is it that i'm unlearning this year for example that was definitely my favorite topic. what one thing from that topic did you take and action what i took from it was every opportunity that i get i get to question and have a choice on whether I do want to still continue. Oh, and that's the point. That was the, the learning was that I still have choices. Not that it's there and therefore must be there. There was no must be. Um, so to sort of, you know, as the um, parachuting, you, you get to learn um, look, locate and cut away. So look, locate, and especially if you're in a bit of an emergency, you can kind of cut away from your parachute and then pull your reserve. And so you look down and you sort of like ding, ding, ding. It was just like this framework. It was like, right, what are you going to cut away? How are you going to streamline? How are you going to focus? Um, yeah, that was that. Was. I like the Dunning Kruger that AJ brought up. It was fun. Like it was, I loved going in not knowing what it was and then spending half an hour talking about something that I didn't know that, what it was before going in, but then <laughs> understanding it. But then understanding it um, going forward meant like, yeah, you know, like you you can see that in your life. And the second you know about it, it's like, oh, yep, yep, I get that, you know. And then how did it change? Well, it kind of stopped me. Um, I know, I mean, I've been more of a guy that's always reserved anyway. Um, but um, it made me understand others are probably a bit better. You know, like everyone's always got their guy who's awesome. And I'm like, you know, how many guys, how many times have you seen him? Oh, I've seen him twice. I'm like, well, no wonder he is Jesus, you know, if he, you know, you've seen him <laughs> twice and you so, like, yeah, people, you know, in everything seem to learn a little bit of knowledge and just be experts on the topic. And I thought that was such a cool thing. Um, I've now got nicknames for people I meet at barbecues. Oh, another, another Kruger, you know. <laughs> AJ? Uh, I'm not sure that I had a favourite show, to be honest. I really, I, I really, for different reasons and in different ways, enjoyed all of the shows I was on. Um, I, I think I, I kind of enjoyed uh, the swearing show more than I probably should have um, <laughs> and got some really interesting feedback on that show. Uh, but but I really, I mean, there was, to me, part of the value of the experience is that I took something away from every episode we did and that there was, uh, there was either a learning or that there was this kind of an aha moment or right. there was a newfound respect for the people on the call or... You know, there was just, you know, there was there was a little nugget in every one. Um, and I think that's part of the blessing of being on this show, you know, that, that we talk about interesting things and, and we say the things we want to say, whether it's comfortable or not, and, and, and we can extract value from that. Um, it yeah. it hasn't happen? been, yeah. So mine would... Um, I don't remember what the topic was. I remember what the topic was. I don't remember the name of the show, but it was actually the one about uh, um, loss. Uh, Tony brought up and he talked about um, the loss of his son. I thought for me that was probably one of the most powerful uh, uh, shows in regards to honesty and openness. And I got an enormous amount of people uh, um, calling me um, and emailing me and saying, oh, look, I, I, brilliant topic. I don't know what to say. 
I do not, I, I can't comment. I mean, like we're all adults. What you like, you don't have to like something, you don't have to comment on something. But that person that came back and a lot of people watched that and contacted and reached out to me and said, that was an amazing show, but they didn't know what to do with it. And for me, that was the greatest because, Tony, you opened up and was so raw about something that, I mean, I know um, age is his biggest fear. I'm sure it's one of mine, you know, losing a child before uh, uh, um, you pass and how you dealt with that and all the things that came around for that. And it was one of the most rawish shows in regards. And Tony, you and I have spoken about this before, but where you've come from and uh, um, how you've taken that. And for a lot of people, it was the first time that they've actually spoken about it. I've had a couple of people even recently, in the last week or two, say um, uh, that uh, um, they've had a friend or a work colleague lose their child and they've gone and watched that and they've got something out of that um, because people don't know what to say or what to do. And for most of us, it's doing nothing is not something you want to do, but at the end is what you do. You know, How do you handle that? So I, I got a lot out of that myself and I got a real connection with you. Um, and as everybody can sort of hear, the one big thing about 2020 is kids coming in and saying hi and dogs and the whole sort of thing. To me, that's probably sums up 2020 the most and the, the famous line, which is um, you're on mute. I think those two things, mm -hmm. kids, and you're on mute would be the two most popular things I've come across this year. But uh, that was the best show. Um, look, I want to do something a little bit strange, a bit egotistical maybe, but I would like to go around um, the four of us and just talk about uh, um, each person individually and what we've got out of that person this year. I've really enjoyed Adam's perspective as, you know, somebody with an incredible amount of integrity and his ability to just not blurt it out, be mindful and kind about how he gets the message across is something that I definitely take away. But I'm also going to say that, um, you know, his personal experiences having stretched him give him way more oscillation. And he's able to put himself into so many different pairs of shoes that, it's like I could literally listen to him go through all the different perspectives and be learning from like five people, but it's just one person talking. Multiple yeah. personalities. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I've loved about AJ is you can see your political mind because he'll always preface things that, you know, he's concerned about, you know, if you don't preface this and I say this, but then there's other things that he's so passionate about. He'll just go full nose, you know, into it. Like, don't care how you can misinterpret this. You're wrong. <laughs> and I, like, it's just awesome. So I love your passion, man. You're, you're, you're a good ball of energy. So for me, AJ, <laughs> the thing has been, I think we're on the same bookcase, but, books at either end of the bookcase and i've enjoyed uh, uh being very similar to you in some ways but in those differences and arguing those points because i've got to know a lot more about where your points have come from and i've got a lot more understanding and out of putting this on the whole point was was to have discussions with people with different viewpoints and and respect those viewpoints and have an argument not a, a bashing, not a, um, a disruption where you just walk away and throw your hands in the air, but actually listening to what they say, getting to know that person and having a good old argument about certain points. Um, and we do see the world differently, but it is the same world. And I, that's what I love about uh, working with you, mate. <laughs> so, Tony, Matt. what do you want? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, he'll forget. He'll forget to introduce himself, like always. <laughs> Damn. Matt. Right. Um, I think a massive takeaway for me from you, having listened to pretty much every single episode, is that there are layers and layers of learnings that you've had because you've been through it. There's nothing that you don't practice yourself. And it comes from experience, sometimes hard earned and often really well understood. And I think from from somebody who has never actually physically met you and most probably doesn't know how tall you are. I hear that you're <laughs> quite tall. Um, you've just got this incredibly warm and yeah, just just inviting um, demeanor. Like there is always a chair next to you that anyone can sit. And that invitation is the most powerful because 
it means that you have never negated somebody's thoughts. You've always invited them in. <laughs> my, my, my favorite thing about Matt is like, A, he names himself common sense, which is just, <laughs> you know, really. Uh, <laughs> but, but like the king of zero preparation, you know, you guys think he says inspiring things. Well, I think that shows how, how much more genuine can you be if you just rock up, hit, you know, <laughs> hit, hit camera on and just start speaking what comes to the mind. So I, I would say that's actually a good thing. You know, I can't do it. You know, I like to think about what I'm going to talk about sometimes. But um, Matt, what, every, everything, if, if you've listened to an episode and you didn't like what he said, well, that probably explains it but if you did like what he said well then you know how genuine it is so there's two ways to look at that <laughs> yeah listen, but for me i think it's it's a bit of what both of you said i i think the big thing about matt more than anything else and maddie i agree with you that that we are um probably not just on the different sides of a bookshelf but probably in different rooms in the house but that's all right <laughs> because, because one of the great things i love about you one of the great learnings is that um, you bring a, uh, you know, to, to Tony's point and to Tia's point, a, a, an authenticity and a warmth to everything that you do. And so um, even when we disagree, I never feel as though there's malice or there's, um, you know, anything other than, than love coming from you, even though we can disagree. And I think that that is a rare, genuinely a rare skill today. Um, and, and I think that you have an ability to overlay your humanity on every conversation. Um, which is rare and something I admire and something I'm a little bit jealous of as well, mate. Well, <laughs> Thanks, Scott. It's really hard to take compliments for me, so thank you very much. Yeah, this is why I'm loving this the most. Look at him <laughs> squirm. He's like really squirming. He's <laughs> really squirming. <laughs> Tony. For me? Oh, well, no, we don't need to do me, guys. I've <laughs> earlier. Definitely, we're definitely doing you, mate. Definitely. <laughs> I, you know, I'll, kick, I, I'll I, kick off with Tony. Okay, I'll kick okay. off with Tony because I, I so I didn't know Tony before this show. I've I'd only I've only physically been in the room with him once, um, but I, I you know I really feel like I was saying this to my wife the other day that I kind of feel like I've got a brother in this show in Tony and that um, he's just the most. Um, what I love about him is he's just real, and I don't mean in the authentic way that we talk about it in the show. I mean, like, he's a real fucking person and he's, um, there's no pretense at all. There's, it's just um, a guy who acknowledges he doesn't have all the answers and he's working through stuff and he likes to think about things and he hasn't figured it out, but this is what he's thinking about at the moment. And maybe he'll have a different opinion next week when we talk to him. <laughs> and I absolutely love that because all day long I deal with people who are so, and myself included, so full of shit and so full of their own ideas. But, mate, you're just the most real, lovely human being that you could ever want to make. <laughs> oh, dude, thank you. <laughs> but, um, you know, whenever I listen to the recordings, the person who makes me giggle the most is you because I listen to something and I'm like, because it's so real as you know as adam was saying it's like there is there's no need for um fake filter do you know what i mean you come across a lot of people who have a fake filter and it's almost as if it's sort of like it's put on and with you it's not you take well, it filtering all. you take it all filtering, you well filtering requires up. energy and i just don't have it so <laughs> <laughs> no, but perhaps that is the case but you've got nothing to hide mm. And because you've got nothing yeah. to hide, you're okay about showing your true self. Yeah. Right? Like you're you're so you're you're like the most honest person that I've come across. And again, I've never met you. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, Tony, um, I really don't like much at all. I mean yeah, noise the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. no, I, I know where you live, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a real connection with Tony. I mean, I, I've, um, and it's only been a, a very short period of time, really, uh, um, realistically. We met, um, what, maybe 
12 months ago, 80 months ago. I get confused with time with this COVID side of things. But what we've shared... five years. Yeah. Oh, 10, 20. It feels that way, though. From the moment that we met, I've never been more honest with anybody and I've never had anybody be as honest back. Um, so the walls that take years to get through to find something out about something hasn't just hasn't been there. For the minute we met, we were straight up um, with really, really interesting and deep topics. Um, and every time I've walked away, I felt good about myself. Um, yeah. every single time. There hasn't been a moment that I've met and I've questioned what I've said or I've questioned what his motives or I've questioned anything about him. So for me, it's just uh, um, the straight out honesty and his viewpoint that matters to me. I um, mean, hearing that on these points, these topics that he looks at, I've, I've been blessed enough to meet his family, uh, where he lived, to uh, uh, meet some of the people he works with. Um, so out of everybody on this, but from maybe Finn, I've got to know Tony the most. And over that time, it's been joyous. It really has. Um, there hasn't been a time that I've... Normally, when you meet somebody, you think, oh, what's coming on? What's going on here? But I've never felt that with Tony. And that's an authenticity that I'm. it's very rare to find. Um, and it's very rare to continually keep that coming all the time. So I, I've been blessed, mate. You've been an absolute diamond in my year. So I really want to appreciate that. Okay. So now, Tony, now we got. What about the dude that's on here? I like to sum up Finn. Oh, I, I, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Hang on, did, yeah. did we do Tia? Yeah, yeah, no, Tia. Not, no, like, no. No, no, we haven't done Tia, but we can do Finn. But well, he's not here as well. But like, I'd like to say, like the. Yeah, I felt like you know they always say in a in a relationship you've got like the reacher and then the um settler or whatever. Yeah, you know, like there's one attractive one and like. Yeah, you know, the reason I had to, you know, be so upfront with myself is because I always felt like, you know, we've got a doctor and this political guy and then Finn's a freaking rock star. So I'm like, what do I got? I just got to, you know, mark anything. So I'm just going to talk straight up. But I think that I was literally reflecting on our podcast the other day and I thought the funny thing I noticed was how comfortable I am talking to Finn now because when he called me at the start of this, I was a bubbling idiot because I'm like, Finn called me, you know, like, <laughs> just like Finn's on the phone. <laughs> and I, I totally, you know, I don't remember if I said anything logical in that conversation, but um, yeah, like he's just someone that thinks very differently. And I like that, um, you know, you know, he's just a normal dude now that I talk to every week um, where it used to be like, Finn's calling, Finn's calling. Um, so Yeah. <laughs> AJ, what are you freaking about Finn? Oh, look, Finn is um, I love Finn. He he, uh, you know, it's been an interesting thing with Finn this year. My my learning this year about Finn because we started off where I think we were in such furious agreement for at least the first five shows. I thought we were the same person, um, <laughs> except for the fact that I woke up in my bed and he wasn't there. Um, but, but towards, towards the end, left the started, before. <laughs> towards the end, we started to to find some um, ground where we didn't agree, which was actually nice as well. I, I, I just I respect the way he goes about his thinking. I respect the way um, he's really honest with himself. I, I love the fact that, um, and I'm always learning from him every show. Um, that he he finds a methodical way of dealing with whatever the issue is that we're confronting um, that week. And he's thought through not just um, what it means to him and, and as a result what it could mean to others by the wisdom that he can impart, but he's really tried, you know, for me, really tried to find practical ways to help people through those issues. Um, and he keeps going back to something that's useful and impactful um, and, I, and I just respect the hell out of that and respect the hell out of him. I love that about him too. I think that his clarity and his frameworks and the way he sort of formulates these ideas and then tests them and improves on them is just an inventor and innovator and an entrepreneur and like all of these things. And for me, Finn is a polymath, somebody who just, just follows his inspiration. I think, you know, when... Um, Liz Gilbert, the uh, author of Eat, Pray, Love, talks about this in her big magic book about inspiration. Just Finn and his methodologies really come to mind. Somebody that takes the inspiration, makes a contract with inspiration that says, right, I'm going to follow you through. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna join you on this journey, and wherever it takes us, it's absolutely fine. And that is, wow, like how much courage, right? Like how much courage to just go with it and just do it. Mm. And there's no outcome that you're like, right, it has to look like this. And then to be able to tell the story afterwards is uh, nuggets of gold for us. Yeah, look, I, I've been blessed to actually be the first time that Tony met Finn and the first time that AJ met Finn. I remember going for a walk and asking AJ to come and to Port Melbourne and walking behind the both of them as they sort of just tossed. I felt like a little school kid just walking behind AJ and Finn as they sort of battled it out over their ideals. And it was great. I was just thinking, this is awesome. So many people should hear this. <laughs> but I felt like a little kid just sort of skipping behind listening, listening to the adults talk. So um, I've always found Finn to be a person that opens up others um, and gets the best out of them. And I've been lucky enough or blessed enough to be um, there on a number of occasions um, and really getting to understand how he goes about something. And it's I've never seen him with a crossword with anybody. I've never seen him look at or, or um, he might say something slyly, not slyly, but he'll say something and you'll watch somebody who's an idiot start to fall apart in front of him because he's... <laughs> egotistically going at something and I've been there a few times where uh, um, in LA or different places where I've seen people that are just very egotistical just slowly get taken apart and not knowing they are. You know, he never does it with maliciousness or her, but you just watch this person he's, as, Finn, uh, as Finn slowly leads them down a path where and they, they go willingly and then they stand there and it's just like no you're an asshole and they work this out themselves but Finn never tells them. <laughs> it's just he's got a beautiful way about him where he will sit down and talk to anybody and think through the innovation that comes from him and out of every show that we've done like AJ said I've learned a way of thinking from him that I hadn't had before um, so that's been immense um, and, and he's just uh, an amazing human that I've, uh, I feel we're all lucky to have known just as I'm lucky to know all of you it's been brilliant but let's go to Tia. No, Tia. no, no. the best, the save, the, the <laughs> best for last. Now, Tia, <laughs> I think the best way to sum you up is that you raise us up in every level, <laughs> like in every level. Like literally, I, I miss that you have you know your, your actual title there because I felt more intelligent by just having you you know next to the box next to me. Um, no, like genuinely, like not just obviously your mind is is just this treasure trove of, of amazingness, but like, you know, we have been more emotional and spoken out deeper topics because you're, you know, you've encouraged it, you've been open, you, you've shown your heart and that's got us all to do it. Like you've, you've, you've brought out the best in all of us in every way, but I do like that you raise us up as well because nothing beats having a doctor on the team. <laughs> So I, uh, um, when I first met Tia, I was like impressed. But every episode, I've come to understand you more, and your friendliness, and your openness, and your true, true self in regards to how much you care for others. You're always looking at things openly, and I don't find that with a lot of people. You, you know, you, you act, have a real open mind. There's a lot of times you you use words I don't understand. I'm googling away to find out what it says you're so much on a level smarter than i am it's it's unbelievable how intelligent you are um and i mean like to be surrounded by four buffed blokes and you sit there and you own it i mean seriously it just shows how much more intelligent women are than men and i, I get that to see that every week when um you, you you talk um but it's not just your intelligence it's your ability to hold us and, and, and as tony sort of said bring us with you um, I've really, really enjoyed a lot of the ways that you look at something because it's so different to how I look at the world and I've learned so much from that. So I'm just blessed that I have met you and AJ for introducing us. It's been a wonderful, wonderful uh, year because of that. Thank you very much, AJ. And, oh, and AJ did tell us how you met and that story alone is worth the price of admission. <laughs> yeah. yeah, look, I... <laughs> I think actually going back to the way that we met is is the way that I can um, frame this this little piece now. Um, you know, I, I I just from literally that first phone call and that first meeting in London, 
um, I have said to you, I have said to others, I think I introduced you before you met them to the team as, you know, Tia is one of my favourite people on this earth. Um, and I sincerely, sincerely mean that. Um, you know, in terms of what you've brought to the show, to to what to what it, both the boys have said so far, you, you make the show better, you make us better, you make the conversation better, you take it to a different intellectual level, um, you provide a perspective that none of us could, could put forth. Um, you have immense integrity in everything that you put forward. Um, and, and what I love is that you push the envelope uh, not from a place of um, just straight curiosity, although there is that. Um, you push the envelope from a place of wisdom. And so you're, uh, you're guiding us into places not because you just want to go there. You're guiding us into places because you know it's where we need to go. And I think that that adds immense value. Um, but, but ultimately, uh, you know, you are a very rare human. Um, a very rare human and and you know that I've spent a lot of time in a lot of places all over the world meeting a lot of very rare humans but uh, you are amongst the very best of them thank you I agree, I agree. I feel like it's my birthday today or something <laughs> well yeah I was thinking like about that. this it really felt like that are we gonna yeah that I mean sorry no, go sorry Andrew, just before we we go but like if you're, you know, still listening to us, and uh, I'll, I'll thank you first. Um, My little love first. I would highlight if you work in a team. When was the last time you did something like this? Because you know this is actually really important, and it's something you need to do. So I would encourage you to. No one likes hearing it, um, but it's you know, every you'll hear something that you would have never thought in yourself and other people always see the better so i would strongly encourage you to do this in your relationship or in a business relationship or in your team because it is very very beneficial for the individuals um and so next year we're going to come back bigger and better and stronger mm -hmm. there may even be some new faces which will be exciting there may be even some more complex and difficult topics what? And there may even be some format changes. And there'll be some format changes as well. So it's going to be a hell of a 21 for Golf Underground. <laughs> but thank so stay you tuned. Everybody, everybody for watching. You know, my mum, my uh, uh, my three cousins. It's been a big, big year. Thank you very much for um, everybody, uh, for the emails, for the phone calls, for the support. This is something I'd never done before. I don't think most of us had done before. Um, and we did it really to entertain ourselves. Um, and so that <laughs> one day a week we could get everybody together. And I know that sounds really uh, um, egotistical, but I am. So I'm saying it. I did it for me. And it, anything that came out from that was a bonus. But it's been joyous and amazing. And the, it has helped me through uh, lockdown. So I want to thank everybody on the panel, everybody for watching. Um, and we'll see you next year. Thank you.